Hey there, Nagas Stu here. Uh, today we've got this Evinrude 150 back in the shop because it's got a few problems. So it went out on the water, ran quite nicely, got straight up from the plane, had full power and everything, uh, but eventually started to lose power and it got driven back to the boat ramp, uh, no alarms, uh, idled at the boat ramp for a while and was then put back on the trailer, but now it appears to have actually seized in some way. So we're going to have a look what's going on. I'll take the power head off to do this, but I'll quickly show you what I've done so far to this point, so you're sort of brought up to speed. I've disconnected the shift linkage here, as we did in the first video. Disconnected the throttle linkages here. Disconnected the wiring loom, here and here. Disconnected the oil and fuel input lines. Also got the timing gear off the top here. And while we're here, I'll just quickly show you. So this flywheel turns. You can hear that the uh, pistons are moving, but it gets to a certain point, and it actually has quite a sudden hard stop. My first worry was something to do with the oil injection, but I'm not so sure about that. We had no alarms. Oil backflowed out of here, so it had oil coming up to it. I drained carburetors, and all the fuels very distinctly coloured, exactly the same as the two-stroke oil that came out of it. So it seems to have had oil in the carbs at the time. I've taken the main mounting bolts out, six bolts from under here. And then there's just a handful of little 3 8 bolts that seem to also hold the power head on. These bolts in here are quite tough to get out. This is the top of the bracket. I've got a socket on here and a swivel here. And hopefully that angle is not too steep to, to crack this one. Then I'll do the bolt on the other side. I'm putting an extension on too so I can get my breaker bar up here. The other side was really tough. I don't expect this side to be much different. Once it starts to give, just putting the gun on it. It's getting dark. It's time to go home. But I am curious to know what's happened to this. All right. That's those two. Let's see how we go. Yeah. Let's see you. Oh yeah, but I'll edit heaps of this out. I'm just messing with it, so Good. it's no big deal. Okay. okay, I promise you. Now what I'm going to do is take this power head into the workshop and get it onto a motor stand so we can start pulling it down and seeing what's happening with it.
right, that's all the head bolts out. Let's uh, go find a pry bar and get this off. That's what uh, we in the business would call relatively unhealthy. It's really important when you're tearing a motor down, particularly one you're not very familiar with, that you group things to make it as easy as possible to put it back together again afterwards. So in this case, for example, these are all the crankcase bolts. There's some large and some small. But when I grab this bag now, I don't have to sort of look at a set of bolts and go, oh, it could be anywhere. You sort of go, right, got the crankcase, grab this bag, I'm good to attach it again. Photos are obviously really good as well, but having a photo is one thing, being able to find the part itself is another thing altogether. Now it's completely stripped, I'll bring you over and I'll show you a few of the, you know, the finer points of things I've noticed as I've been working on this motor. So if you look here, it's actually got 0.030 stamped on these pistons, so it looks like they're already oversized. This is our cooked piston here, let's see if I can bring that higher up. That's about as far as I'll get it. A bit of damage here. Looks like it might have got hot enough to start having some pre-detonation, which has really melted this piston. These Evinrudes don't have a head gasket, they just have these O-rings around here. And you can see here, this O-ring looks like there's been a bit of water, cooling water bypassing here. There's a lot of this master gasket sealant, sort of Loctite product, but still quite fresh. So between the sealants, the oversized pistons, there's a fair bit of evidence this thing's been apart at some stage in its life and possibly not that long ago. I'm still a little bit of a loss for why this has failed so catastrophically. This heaps of oil through it, so I think it was getting oil quite nicely. And the water pump was definitely working. I spoke to the owner, he said uh, no overheat alarm, and the telltale was quite strong the whole time. The water galleries seemed relatively clear. There's a little bit of sealant that's migrated down into the galleries from when the head was put on, but I don't think it would be anything particularly catastrophic. The thermostats both open when they're immersed in warm water, so I think they were functioning correctly as well. So, interesting to see. Anyway, the next step is going to be to take these end caps from the big end bearings off so we can get the pistons out and the crankshaft out. What I need to do first though is to mark them all. As with the other components that we talked about earlier, getting things back in the right order is really important and it's never more important with thing than things like big end bearings, end caps, pistons, all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is get a couple of um, punches and I'm going to number them one to six and I'll mark the, the end cap and the con rod itself and so I'll number them and then the orientation of the number will make sure that the end cap goes around the right way as well. So I'll go ahead and I'll just mark all those and then we'll take the end caps off. To do this I'm going to use a set of punches like this, these are the number ones. So I'll just start with number one. And on the end caps here, I'll put a one on, similar to number one obviously, on the end cap and then another one down here on the, the con rod. And that way we can reassemble it all in the right order. Now they're all marked, I'm going to take them out in order and lay them all out in order. These end caps have a 12 point fastener on them, so I'm going to use a socket like this. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. But, there's a problem, and I'll show you. The fasteners on the end caps have so little clearance between the end cap and the fastener that I can't fit this socket in. So I'm going to go put this socket on the grinder and take a bit of the metal away, just on a portion of it. If I had a lathe, it would have been really nice to have turned this down a bit more professionally, but you know, you work with what you got.
Now I've got this, that end cap off, I'm just going to push this piston out. And in case you're wondering then, I was actually just pushing on this edge here, not the surface in here. So I'll keep going and take all six of these out and then we'll have a look on the bench once they're all laid out. You can fish both halves of these um, big end bearings out pretty easily before the piston drops down. They're all out now. Certainly confirms to me there was no shortage of oil going through this motor. Let's go and have a closer look. This is what we're left with. Six end caps. Six sets of big end bearings. None of which look particularly bad, to be honest with you. None of them have totally disintegrated those bearings. And then our six pistons. This is our melted one. They're all quite, actually I say they're all, this one's quite good. This one's heavily scored. This one's heavily scored as well. This one's quite smooth. What pleases me about the big end bearings not having failed is that it means there doesn't appear to be any damage to the crankshaft. That's great. Saves money, saves work, so that's good news. Um, we're getting all new forged pistons anyway, so they'll be better than original, and we're reboring the cylinders. So now I'm going to send this off to CDA. It's a company down the road that does um, does heads, all that kind of stuff. We'll obviously send the heads off as well, get those machined. I did put a straight edge across the heads earlier, and they're pretty flat. There's not a huge bow in them or anything, so that's also good. Um, so if we get six new pistons and rebore, then and you know new bearings, whatever is required, then theoretically this motor should be better than it ever was. What we don't want to have happen though is this again. I don't know how much of this is pre-existing damage, why this motor was essentially given away, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, so I think it's worth repairing because I think there's enough value in the motor to, to do it and to do it right. But we then now to have need to really make sure obviously the oil injection's working, the water pump was working, the thermostats are working, the cooling galleries aren't blocked. If it did overheat during this trip and not just fail from previous damage, which is possible, then the temperature sensor is obviously not working because there was no alarm. But I'm starting to think this didn't all happen in this 10 minute journey this boat went on. When I go down to CDA, I'm going to give them a call and see whether we can do some filming there because I'd love to take this out there and, and do the filming of the actual machining of this. I don't know whether they'll agree to that or not, but I'll, I'll find out. And if I can, I'll definitely take you guys along so we can see what happens in the shop. All right, let's see if we can get this crankshaft out and then we'll have a look at that and then we'll wrap up. I'll take this over to the bench where there's a bit more light. So here we are here, um, top oil seal, crankshaft looks good, as I said those bearings didn't actually die so I'll have a talk to uh, the experts, see what they say, but I certainly think this is going to be reusable which is great. I'm not so concerned about the bores themselves because they're going to get machined, but in this case very nasty, quite nice, very nasty. This one's good, you can actually even still see the cross hatching on that one. That one's nasty, and that one's quite smooth too with the cross hatching. So a few of them are actually quite smooth, you can see the cross hatching from when they were honed. But the others have terrible grooves down them. There's a bit of a lip at the top of some of them, but not all of them, which makes me think maybe this motor hasn't done a lot of work. Curious that it's already running on oversized pistons, so maybe it's already been home before. Hopefully we've got enough wall thickness, but we'll find out. 
So thanks for watching. Uh, this certainly wasn't the video I was hoping to be making at this stage when it comes to the uh, little journey of this particular boat and motor. But, you know, we'll make the best of the situation. Uh, anyway, thanks again for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.